Schedule 2 by John Romero. Although I had fun with it, it was probably the roughest blind experience on my channel so far. Secrets that become unobtainable after 30 seconds which cause most runs to go like this. Where could it be? Can it be all the way here? It is not here. Is it here? It is not there. Is it... Somewhere over here. Behind the caco. Am I gonna die? Probably. <laughs> Also, high tier enemies while not being offered a lot of weapons. This is kind of a sad way to end it. How many bullets does it even take? I don't know if I ever chain gun a cyber demon. And of course, the occasional skill issue. I am gonna go back and see if I missed any medikits. Really? What? What? Yeah, some things just felt less than ideal. Partially my fault for wanting to UV max it blind, I guess. Practice runs, however, are a completely different beast, especially on the Nightmare difficulty, where you aren't required to kill everything for a successful run. And since I already completed Sigil 1 on Nightmare with all secrets and items last year, I wondered, could I achieve the same thing for the sequel and maybe be the first one to do so? But before we get into the journey, let's go through some Nightmare specific mechanics. As you might know, the Nightmare skill makes it so enemies have a chance to respawn, once they've been dead for over 12 seconds. This means that backtracking greatly increases the difficulty. The second thing is that enemies have no reaction time. Once they see you, they will attack. And not just that, they also become extremely aggressive and basically act like turrets as long as you're in their sights. Finally, most enemy projectiles are a lot quicker, plus Pinky's inspectors move and attack at double the speed. Now, Sigil 2 definitely feels a lot more difficult than the first one, and the first one was already quite a challenge on Nightmare, so my initial assumption was that it would either be extremely hard, or maybe even impossible. When grinding E6 and 1 last month, which is the first mission, it quickly started feeling like I just couldn't do it. For the first 200 attempts, I never even really got close. 80% of the attempt went something like this. And there's more difficult sections, such as this underground walkway with caged imps and shotgunners, these two horrible pinkies behind the door, while the aforementioned imps blast you to pieces if you haven't killed them, and this indoor section with enemies that just keep respawning. Reaching the exit was sometimes possible, but there's two barons in this area who take way too long to take down with the shotgun or the chain gun. And although the exit is in plain sight, there are two more secrets for you to collect first. One requires you to hit this crack in the wall and visit the fire blue area, which is already pretty tough with all those enemies around. But the second one is much, much worse. It requires you to jump back down to the beginning and do some platforming with the cyber demon on the loose and tons of hitscans shooting at you, if you even make it down. This was the biggest roadblock by far. Oh, and I quickly dropped the 100% items part of this map due to, well, this. Going for all the secrets is hard enough already. But then, when all hope was lost, I opened up Ultimate Doom Builder, a program to create maps with, and figured out a new strategy to prevent the group of barons near the exit from spawning. And this changed everything! I got a huge wave of motivation, and after about 100 more attempts, I was finally able to beat the map.
Now, a month later, it was time for E6M2. After my recent victory, I was filled with hope and I felt ready to tackle whatever this map would throw in my way. And then it proved to be even worse than E6M1. In this video, I want to show you my journey across the 400 attempts, what strategies I used, and how it once again went from feeling impossible to maybe possible after all with enough grinding. I really hope you enjoyed this more analysis focused video. Okay, so what makes this map difficult? Well, E6M2 is pretty much one giant building. Lots of walls open up as you progress through the level, which means that anything you kill will most likely respawn once, if not multiple times before you reach the exit. And what is behind those walls? Lots and lots of hitscan. Just take a look at the very first trap that opens up. Or the second one. You get the idea. And then there's seven freaking secrets, forcing you to revisit the same areas multiple times. In fact, with my route, you start inside, go outside, back inside, outside, back inside, outside, and finally inside one last time before heading to the exit. Oh, and don't forget about the cyber demon that will chase you as you try to do this. By the time you reach the halfway point, so many enemies will be chasing you throughout the map that there just doesn't seem to be a way to get past them. There's the middle section, which is usually very cramped, and I haven't even talked about the penultimate section yet. Four Kako Demons and Los Souls, Shotgunners, Imps, plus a Baron, a Spectre and a Shotgunner in a very cramped area. Then, when you press the switch, another wave of four Shotgunners, a Kako, three Los Souls and an Imp. And if, after all of that, you somehow manage to get through the teleporter leading to the final room, be ready to win the quick draw against the Shotgunner right in your face. And hope you survive the Spectre and Imp combo next to you. All of these roadblocks combined honestly almost made me want to give up. You just keep taking so much damage as you're fighting your way to the exit. These four Kakos are especially horrible, because they just act like turrets and won't let you through. And by the way, I have all the secrets in this run, so I just need to make it to the end. But as you know, even if you do make it past the Kaka wall, there's like three more encounters waiting for you. And I just don't have the health. This run feels so close and yet so far. At this point, I realized that I wouldn't be able to beat it without figuring out some new strategies. So let's go through the map step by step and do exactly that. The first trap isn't too bad. Take down the Lost Soul, then trigger the trap and immediately run back to the starting point. The wall opens up just slowly enough for you to barely make it out. And... What? Ah. Yeah, that Kako is definitely a problem. Not only does it brush you with projectiles, it can also easily blow up one of the barrels that are scattered throughout the room. So let's kill it before doing anything else. Alright, take two. The same thing, but with one extra step. We take down the Kako, kill the Lost Soul, hide from the trap, kill the shotgunners and everything else, and... Wait, what's hitting me now? Oh, it's that shotgunner from outside. He's extremely annoying. And of course we can take him out while fighting, like with the Kako, but... Let's do something else instead. This is a screenshot of Ultima Doom Builder. I'm using the Doom Guide to show you the position of the camera, so this is equal to this in 3D. This green line here is called the Line Death, and it can trigger certain actions. In this case, hovering over it shows W1 Door Open Stay, and it is linked to this wall. This means that walking across this line will open it, and it will stay open. The number 1 means that it can only trigger once, which makes sense, because the door stays open anyway. For this action to trigger, Doomguy's center must cross the line. However, this line doesn't extend all the way to the corner, and since it's only about Doomguy's center, it allows us to barely do this. There is a small risk however that the game slightly pushes you over the line anyway, and the wall opens up. I choose to accept this risk because it's very early into the run, and it gets rid of a frustrating enemy. So what's next? The 30 second secret of course. Depending on how the run is going, you might have to hurry. Dealing with the second trap is quite awkward, because this wall just blocks your view, sometimes spectres run inside, and if you're unlucky, you might even have to deal with respawning enemies, like Akako. But guess what? John was once again very cool, and the line death that opens the wall can be completely avoided. This is huge, not only because it skips the fight, but mostly because it just prevents a whole group of enemies from roaming throughout the map. And this made me realize, maybe I can save enough health for the final part after all. Then, the run continues like normal. 
Head outside, where the shop owner should still be dead from earlier, and collect the secret supercharge. Then head over to the fire below crack in the wall. Yep, just like the 30 second secret and the cyber demon, this is present in every Sigil 2 map. The actual fire blue area itself though is up this ledge, so we will have to go back inside to actually collect it. And this is where skipping that second trap pays off big time. Of course there are some respawning enemies as you can see, but compared to before it's not nearly as bad. What is bad however is that the Kaku demon from the very beginning has respawned, and boy is it angry. And because you need to shoot this Sigil eye to open the door to the central area, you're pretty much required to kill the Kako a second time. This gives more time for previous enemies to respawn. And that brings us to one of the most important strategies on Nightmare, weakening enemies for later. What if we don't kill the Kako at the beginning, but we shoot it like 4 or 5 times with a shotgun instead, and then later on we just do this. One shot, one kill, and the time saved is easily worth the annoyance at the beginning of the run. This is something you can use in many places, you just have to figure out where. Take the Xenos run of Doom 2's map 29 for example, and this map is really difficult on Nightmare. I'm gonna damage this Hellnet in advance. I'll spend maybe 20 bullets on him. There. Now this Hellnet should die quick. Yeah. Time to head outside. Be careful though, because once you go through the door, a wave of enemies spawns that can block you from below. Now we just got to head inside the fire blue area. The only problem is that there is a huge goat trying to hunt us down. And while you can get lucky, he is very consistent at hitting you. Is there anything we can do to make this section better? Turns out, we can. You can actually barely shoot the fire blue crack from the little hallway with some precise aiming. Additionally, the cyber demon has the ambush flag set, which means he won't pick up from your gunshots alone, you also need to enter his line of sight. And because he's a decent distance away from the hallway you're in, it gives you just enough time to walk across the ledge and tag the secret before being hit. And if you're quick enough, you can immediately go for the mega armor secret afterwards, which is key to survival. There is one problem though. For a run to be official, you need to submit a demo to DSDA, the Doom Speed Demo Archive. A demo basically plays back your inputs in real time and is very easy to record. However, it turns on something called short ticks. This decreases the resolution in which you can turn left and right. And while this usually isn't too noticeable in game, it completely destroys our strategy of hitting the fire blue wall from far away. You always end up shooting too far left or right. And even if I try to move Doomguy himself, I barely can't shoot the crack until I start hitting the hallway in front of me. It's really close. But wait. If you shoot the pistol continuously, it's not accurate anymore. And the shotgun has a random horizontal spread by default. This means that if we shoot long enough, we should eventually be lucky and randomly hit it anyway. It could take one shot, or it could take over 200. You simply have to be lucky. But if you are, you ensure that you take no damage in this section. Let's move on. We grab the mega armor and move back inside to the central area. Shoot this hidden sigil eye to reveal a door that leads outside to the secret berserk. When you go outside though, this wall opens up, revealing the enemies from the second trap that we tried so hard to keep hidden near the beginning. Was it all for nothing? Is the run over? Of course not, this is our boy John Romero, so we basically do the same thing as last time. We skirt past the line death and avoid the trap. Hell yeah. Grab the Berserk and either kill or knock away the Kako. Then return back inside, making sure that he dodged the trap a second time. Here we are, we've got all the secrets and the only things standing in our way are the Kako wall and the final section. Collect the chain gun and get ready. Fight through the Kako wall and head over to the switch. Wait, what? Once you beat the Kako wall, you're supposed to win, aren't you? Aren't you? What the hell is this? It's not supposed to end this way. Well, we didn't really beat the Kako wall. We made it there with way more health and armor thanks to our new strategies, but we need to figure something out for the Kakos themselves as well. Otherwise they will just trap you inside that room with the switch. And even killing them isn't ideal, because then you rely on RNG and you have to hope that they don't respawn. So here's the last strategy before we are really ready to beat the map, luring enemies away. 
This is something I never really thought about, until both this map and not even remotely fair map 29 basically forced me to. If you've seen my nerf video, I basically explain it there, but if you haven't, here's the short version. We got teleported all the way to the left, right here. You can see all the enemies moving to the left, because while well, they're trying to find their way to you, right? And you really need to take advantage of this in this map. Luring enemies, monster pathing, I guess in general, is a huge thing here. We need to go over here. Um, but it's always so crowded here, it's a huge issue. Well, that sure sounds familiar. This issue is pretty much identical for E6M2, so I suggest one less change to our run. We reveal the caca wall before heading to the berserk, and instead of going back inside, we take the long way around. Hopefully, this lures the cacos far enough away for us to sneak past, and they most likely will get stuck trying to reach us in the switch room. And here's a great example of that. It's worth it to wait outside there for a bit and ensure the cacos get out of that corner. And then we make our mad dash for the chain gun and the final section. With all the cacos out of here, it suddenly seems a lot more doable. Alright, it's time. I've shared all my strategies and now it's time to combine them all into one successful run. Let's go.
Thank you so much for watching. I usually only do playthroughs, so I'm very new to this kind of scripted content. But if you enjoyed, please let me know by liking the video, leaving a comment or subscribing. I really had a blast creating this. And I'd also like to give a special thanks to the members supporting my channel, especially the following slayers. Spectre, Mancubian Candidate, Chaos to You, UCM06W5LBLRTHCTZEOJ99TG, Bjorn Anderson, German B90, Doug Rican Major, Steph BBQ, Sint, Machhauser, John Stanberry, Leek, Fire Blue for the Red Sun, Nannan, Mighty Jabba's Collection, Yukiro, Tavio2, M159852, Michael Bowman, Smiling Imp, Yugi Boy85, Yawk, Dominic Beecham, Brian S, OKJS20, okay Mehmet Ali Kaplan, Federico Nahuel, and Across32. Thanks again for watching and see you later. Bye bye.